Hello everyone and welcome. In this video sponsored by Mobile One, we're going to be learning about the differences between race car oil and road car oil thanks to discussions I've had with the engineering teams from Mobile One, Roush Yates Engines, and Stuart Haas Racing. I think it's often the case we see something done in racing and as a result we feel like it's a good idea for our road cars, when actually they're quite different applications with significantly different needs. So for this video, we're going to be comparing oil you might use in your own car to the oil used in NASCAR. For road cars, there are all kinds of tests and regulations as criteria that the oil must meet. In NASCAR, oil regulations are pretty unrestricted, allowing for very specific formulas and open-ended ingenuity to the sport. So how does a highly regulated road car formulation differ from the unrestricted nature of oil in NASCAR? We'll break this down looking at differences in engine design, drain intervals, oil viscosities, oil additives, including the highly debated subject of zinc content or ZDDP, and finally bespoke versus mass market formulas. Starting with engine design, modern NASCAR engines are 358 cubic inch V8s. Specifically, we're looking at a Roush Yates engine, who supplies the power plants to teams like Stuart Haas Racing. These naturally aspirated engines create different power levels, about 510, 550, and 750 horsepower depending on the tapered spacers used, which act as an airflow restriction. Certainly they're making more power than the average road car, and these engines are capable of revving close to 10,000 RPM, a pretty impressive number when you consider these are pushrod engines, using a single camshaft mounted in the center of the V to open and close the intake and exhaust valves. And while there are certainly many V8 road car engines, the industry is trending towards downsized turbocharged engines. Road car engines feature significantly more sophisticated valve trains with variable timing, variable lift, and even variable duration. Smaller displacements are used, often around 2 liters, or about a third of the size of a NASCAR engine. Of course, it's important to think about what the overall goal for the engine is. In racing, the goal for a NASCAR engine is to maximize power without breaking down. Pretty straightforward. More power is a competitive advantage, so you increase your chances of winning. Engines will last about three races before needing a major teardown and service, or about 1,500 miles. The engine oil can be changed out any time the car isn't on the track, so typically it won't go more than about 500 miles without an oil change. Of course, road car engines need to last far longer than 1,500 miles. While powertrain warranties are generally good for about 60,000 miles, Typically engines can easily reach 100,000 miles and if properly maintained, over 200,000 miles. In fact, Mobile One motor oils are designed to keep important vehicle engine parts in excellent condition for 250,000 miles. But again, reliability is part of the goal. Of course efficiency and emissions are important, but it's critical that engines last a long time for consumers to want them. Imagine owning a road car that needed oil changes every 500 miles or an engine replacement every 1500 miles. Not ideal. Today's road cars are pushing oil drain intervals as high as 10,000, 15,000, even 20,000 miles between oil changes. Moving on to viscosity grades, you'll see a wide range of oils used in production cars. While some engines will run thicker grades like 0W40 or 15W50, the industry trend is once again heading towards thinner oils like 0W20 or 0W16, which offer efficiency advantages. If you're curious if these thinner oils can still offer good protection and engine reliability, I have a full video dedicated to this subject I'd recommend checking out. It's also important to keep in mind that road cars, in comparison to race cars, are rarely at full throttle and thus the demands and challenges placed on the engine oil aren't as severe as racing applications. On a high speed track in NASCAR, the engine might operate at wide open throttle for 90-95% to of the race, full load nearly all the time. That's a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, and brutal stresses constantly passing through the engine. This leads to our viscosity discussion. You'd probably expect these higher power race engines are using thick oils, but you might be surprised to learn you can find the equivalent of SAE 20 grade to SAE 30 grade oils being used in NASCAR, and potentially even thinner for qualifying. Again, keep in mind the goal for NASCAR. The engine needs to last about 1500 miles. Let's make up a hypothetical scenario to illustrate this point. Say by using 0W50, you're able to get 10,000 miles out of a race engine. By using a thinner oil, like 0W30, maybe you see slightly more wear, but you also have a small bump in horsepower by using that thinner oil, 
and in racing it's all about finding small incremental improvements to give yourself a competitive edge. As long as that engine still lasts 1500 miles, who cares? It makes sense to use an oil as thin as possible to give you the least amount of frictional losses within the engine, thus maximizing horsepower. For road cars, the equation is a bit different. Horsepower certainly matters, but there's a far greater focus on optimizing efficiency while simultaneously maximizing engine longevity. From an additive standpoint, I was surprised to learn that racing oils will tend to include many of the same types of additives. Antioxidants and detergents can help with carbon buildup on race engines and road engines alike. Dispersants, rust inhibitors, anti-foaming agents, which help with the high RPM of race engines, even when dry sump systems are used. Though one road car oil additive, poor point suppressants, which helps thin out the oil in cold temperatures, isn't necessarily as useful in racing applications where startup temperatures generally aren't well below freezing like road car engines may experience. If it's minus 40 degrees at the racetrack, it's probably not a NASCAR race day. One big difference between a race oil and a road oil is the zinc content, or ZDDP. ZDDP is a family of compounds which include both zinc and phosphorus, and they're a hotly debated subject of online oil forums, with the general belief that the more ZDDP an oil has, the better. Let's break this down. First, how does it work? When exposed to high heat and pressure, ZDDP creates a sacrificial layer on your engine's hardware. If for some reason there is metal-to-metal -metal contact at this region, instead of your engine's components getting wear, the sacrificial layer of ZDDP takes on the burden, and it's very good at doing so. ZDDP is in a constant cycle of being sacrificed and then rebuilding in the same location as a result of the heat and pressure. Interestingly, the oil concentration of ZDDP doesn't dramatically change during the oil change interval as it undergoes this cycle. Now, having that sacrificial layer sounds great, so we should want oils with plenty of ZDDP, right? Well, small quantities of engine oil can actually make its way into the combustion chamber and in doing so, exit out the exhaust. Unfortunately, ZDDP, specifically the phosphorus in it, acts as a poison to catalytic converters. Used in too high of concentrations, it will cause the emissions equipment to fail. So, because of emissions equipment, road car oils don't have enough ZDDP, right? Well, not exactly true. Again, ZDDP plays a role when you have metal-to-metal -metal contact. If you're not having metal-to-metal -metal contact, and you're maintaining a robust oil film between moving parts, which is absolutely how road car engines should be operating, then you're not reliant on ZDDP. Much of the concern over the necessity of ZDDP is as a result of an old engine style, flat tappet camshafts. In this scenario, a cam lobe is slamming into a tappet to open the valves, metal-to-metal -metal contact can occur, and ZDDP plays a big role here. But modern engines have been using roller lifters for decades, which use a wheel where the camshaft lobe contacts the lifter. This dramatically reduces wear and minimizes friction, greatly reducing the need for ZDDP. Don't believe me? In the early 2010s, NASCAR switched over from flat tappet lifters to rollers. I asked if this led to a reduction in ZDDP used in their oil formulations, and yep, ZDDP concentrations were cut by about half. Now, racing oils still tend to have more ZDDP than road car oils, about double, but this isn't purely because of the emissions equipment. Sure, race engines don't typically have catalytic converters, so there's no worrying about phosphorus poisoning. You wouldn't want to run these higher concentrations through stock emissions equipment. But race engines also operate for much longer durations with high loads and pressures, providing more opportunities for ZDDP to be useful, especially true depending on the style of engine and materials used. Again, the main goal of oil is to create a film between moving metal parts, so that wear doesn't occur in the first place. Today's production engines are very good at this, and in addition have much tighter tolerances than the old days when ZDDP played a bigger role in keeping engines safe. Modern engines also have materials improvements, such as diamond-like coatings or plasma sprayed cylinder liners that minimize the wear from any metal-to-metal -metal contact that may occur. Simply put, today's engine internals are better designed. Yes, ZDDP is a useful additive, but Mobile One tells me that the durability of today's road car engines is not hindered by concentration limits of ZDDP. Finally, it's worth discussing the advantages of designing a bespoke engine oil for a specific engine versus creating an engine oil for the entire automotive market. When designing for passenger cars, you have a massive set of requirements the oil must pass. 
These are worst case scenario tests to ensure the oil works in anything from super old cars to brand new cars. So the oil is built for worst case for the cars that are the hardest on engine oils, not necessarily your car. In NASCAR, you're encouraged to take advantage of this fact. For example, a NOAC volatility test measures how much of an oil evaporates at high temperatures. If you see GM's DEXO certification on the back of a bottle, that means in the NOAC test, less than 13% of the oil evaporates off. But that's GM's requirement for a wide range of their engines. For a racing engine, you could specify your exact needs based on that single engine, and not just for this test, but any of the tests that can be used to evaluate an oil. Another example is looking at viscosity. An SAE 30 grade oil is not an exact viscosity. There is a range that falls under the categorization of a 30 grade. For a NASCAR engine, you can specify the exact viscosity you need for your engine, at a much finer level of detail than an SAE 30 grade range. Getting this viscosity in the perfect balance of performance versus reliability might be worth a few extra horsepower. And of course, this comes at a cost. In NASCAR, there's only so many avenues to go down due to the rule book to maximize horsepower. So is it worth it to spend, say, $100 a bottle on bespoke oil, even if it meant only gaining one horsepower? Yes, absolutely. New formulas are continuously tested. There could be as many as 20 bespoke formulas created and tested during a single NASCAR season, always seeking to further optimize performance. Now, would it be theoretically possible to apply that same logic to your car and have a very expensive oil that gives you another horsepower? Sure, but no one wants to spend $100 per quart on their road cars. Off-the-shelf solutions have undergone the test to be proven to be effective. And if power was the goal, you could put that money elsewhere and likely find different avenues for significantly greater performance gains. Intake, exhaust, better tune, you get the idea. So I hope you've enjoyed this insight into the world of race oils. If you'd like to learn about the advantages of switching to synthetic oils from conventional, or how oil viscosity grades keep getting thinner, or if you can use synthetic oils in old cars, I'd recommend checking out the links in the video description. Before Mobile One's formulations end up in a bottle, they undergo about 20,000 hours of lab and field testing, along with 500,000 miles of road and track testing. You can find Mobile One synthetic motor oil at an automotive retailer or service center near you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.